everybody welcome back to another episode of king tech uh today's episode is going to be a review of the iphone 11. uh most of the footage you'll see today is going to be actually shot on the iphone 11 so if you like this footage this is what you can expect from the front facing camera this is 4k 60 in all its glory you can see we're at the beautiful world war one museum in kansas city i'm um, also union station is right behind us as well so uh, we're going to go through the phone today. I'm going to show you all the features, show you all the camera stuff, just give you a complete walkthrough of everything that I've been using this phone for over the last three weeks or so. So stick with us as we go through it. Everybody say hello to Cam. Hi, Cam. All right, let's go. All right, one quick feature I wanted to highlight is the new front facing camera on the iPhone 11. It's wider this year. So you'll notice um, when you're taking selfies that the it expands a lot wider than your older iPhones will. So you can get more people in the shot. You can get the background if that's what you're looking for. But it's just a, it's just a better overall camera on the front. Like obviously you can see here I'm recording 4K60 once again. Um, but this video looks really good. I think the dynamic range just does a really good job. Um, you can see here going against the sun, uh, it does a very good job when it comes to balancing. Like I'm, I think I'm, my face is fully balanced. You can see me clearly, um, even though one part of my face is in the sun, one part is not. It does a really good job when it comes to um, exposing the shot um, overall. So I think they did a really good job with the front facing cameras. Obviously we'll get to the rear facing cameras here pretty soon, but those are just amazing as well. So we'll keep this going. Now let's move on to the stars of the show, which are the ultra wide and the wide angle on the back of the iPhone 11. And I think these are the main reason to upgrade for anybody looking to upgrade to the iPhone 11 from an older phone. So let's dive more into these. So the first thing we look at is the portrait photos from the iPhone XS and the iPhone 11. And the first thing you'll notice is how much zoomed in the iPhone XS is. It uses a telephoto camera instead of using the regular wide angle camera, which the iPhone 11 uses. I think the iPhone 11 does a really good job of portrait shots. And also this year, we can also take pictures of pets. So that's a big upgrade from the iPhone XR. Next up was just using the camera. You'll notice that we have this one time zoom here. So we get our regular wide angle and then we get our ultra wide angle here when you hit that and it just zooms out, gives you such more of a better perspective when it comes to things. And I really like this. Um, it takes some really nice pictures. You get so much more in your pictures, so much more of the landscape. It's just a really nice thing to have. The point is with the new ultra wide camera, it's just fun to use and I wish every phone had one. Moving on though, we have the iPhone 11 versus the iPhone 10 when it comes to nighttime photography and it's just night and day literally. The iPhone 11 takes some amazing shots at nighttime and I wish every camera had this nighttime photography feature. But as every iPhone, the new iPhone also has amazing video as iPhones in past, but this year, the stabilization has drastically improved as you'll see here than the iPhone 10 versus the iPhone 11. It's just a lot better. Um, and also we have the ability to take video with that ultra wide camera as well. And you can switch between perspectives and it switches smoothly, no color changes, no nothing. It's just an amazing camera all in all. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio, AKA my living room. Uh, but. You've seen everything so far about the cameras. Now I want to talk to you about using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis and what that's been like for me. Obviously, I'm coming from Android phones. Like I said, I've been a die-hard Android user for the last, uh, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, but when we switch over to iOS, there's some things that I love and some things that I don't love. And I just want to go through those real quick. But I want to start off by saying overall, the iPhone 11 is an amazing phone. You can't go wrong. If you're thinking about upgrading and you're in it for the cameras, definitely do it. Uh, but if you're in it for not necessarily cameras, then I would say wait for next year. But let's just go, a few, go through a few of those things I love real quick. 
Number one being, I love iMessage. Uh, like I said before, I just didn't know how good iMessage was. And I'm a little sad that I didn't because iMessage, talking with my friends and just communicating that way has been a lot better than any experience I've ever had on Android, whether that be Allo or whatever Google has cooked up this year for us to use iMessage is definitely the way to go. It's more secure. Um, you can do a lot more things on it for as talk to your friends, FaceTiming. Everything just works completely through end to end. Um, and I can't say enough about iMessage and the fact that I've just been missing out. So I'm sorry. So next up, let's talk about the app experience on iOS and how much better it is than Android. Google has a lot of catch up to do when it comes to the app experiences on Android phones. And I think iOS right now is just crushing it. Um, when you're talking about apps for us, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, they all work 10 times better on iOS than they do on Android. And not to mention that Apple has also come up with Apple Arcade, where there's over 100 games specifically made for the iPhone, and it's only $5 a month. Like, it's just crazy. If you're a gamer and you're looking to game on your mobile phone, iOS is definitely the way to go. And Apple is straight crushing the game when it comes to app support the security of apps in the app store they're just totally demolishing google when it comes to that and that's gonna be a really hard thing for me to go back to is the app experience on android not being as good as it is on ios especially twitter which is an app i use every day that one is definitely better on ios than it is on google so you know we'll see what happens if i go back or not but those those two things right there definitely the iMessage and apps definitely will keep me in the ios ecosystem for now Next up, I want to talk about battery life. Now, battery life is one of those things I hope I never have to worry about on the phone, and the iPhone 11 has just given me that just that. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, wireless charging works, plugging it in works, the battery lasts all day. It's just that it lasts all day. Don't have to worry about it, so we'll keep it at that. Next up, let's talk about some features that are on both iOS and Android, and those features that I think iOS is doing a lot better than Android right now. And that first feature being dark mode. Dark mode on iOS is system wide. There's no guessing which apps it works in for its iOS apps. It works in the notes app, works in the reminders app, works in the camera app. It works in every app iOS has to offer. And that's just the way it should be. With Google, you have to kind of guess. Is it in Gmail now? Oh no, it's not just yet. It's in the Play Store. It's, it just works across the system wide in iOS. And that's the way it should be. Next up, performance. Now you can argue that I, that Android phones have better specs and better storage and better RAM management, all that kind of different stuff. But when it comes to your iPhone, it just works. Now you might have an app crash here and there because of the software pushes that Apple has been pushing out that you know they haven't to fix. But overall, generally, there's no performance issues when it comes to iOS. It just works and that's the way it should be. You shouldn't have to worry about performance and that's exactly what's been going on with me for the last three weeks. I have not had to worry about, worry about performance. All right, so next up, let's get into some things I don't like. You knew it was coming. You know there are some things that I'm not loving. But I want to preface this by saying that these are nitpicks. These aren't things that are going to drastically change the way you use your iPhone if they do change, you know, in the future. But first thing being is customization. I don't like that I can't customize my phone to my liking. I can't put apps where I want to put them. I can't move things around where I want to put them. I can't put widgets on my home screen. Like, this is a lot of those little nitpicky things that I can't do that are keeping me from saying I'm diving into iOS full time. Now, will that change in the future? Maybe, but at the end of the day, they don't drastically change the way you'll use your iPhone. So like I said, they're, they're nitpicky, but those are just some things that I appreciate about Android and I wish was on iOS as well. And if it was, it would probably be, it would practically be a perfect operating system if you ask me. Next up, I want to talk about the fact that the new iPhone 11, the screen quality is just not on par with what you can get for a $700 phone in 2019. Apple, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why you gave us a sub HD screen on a $700 phone. It's just not, it's just not what it should be. And even on the iPhone 11 Pro, you're claiming this is this XDR amazing Pro Retina display, but honestly, the Note phone. The Note phones have a better screen. The OnePlus 7 Pro has a better screen. It's just not what it should be when you're charging this amount of money for a phone. And I need them to fix it because, yeah, they need to fix it. When you're watching Netflix, when you're watching YouTube on this iPhone 11, it doesn't look nearly as good as it can look on another phone for around the same price for $700. And Apple knows that. 
but we'll see if they fix it in the future. It's not a deal breaker, but for me, coming from other Android phones that had those amazing screens, I noticed it a lot more than the average user might. So like I said, this is once again nitpicky. If they upgraded the screen, it probably wouldn't change your everyday usage of the phone anyway. So that's just where it is. So next up, I wanted to talk about some of the gimmicks and things that you get with Android. Uh, number one being, I love Samsung Pay. Um, Samsung Pay works anywhere. You don't have to see whether they have. You don't have to see whether they have Apple Pay, whether they have an NFC terminal. It just works. Um, they have MST, which mimics an old credit card swipe, which is just so easy to use, and you can't go, you can't miss with it. They also give you points for purchasing with Samsung Pay, whether you have an Apple card or you know not. Like they give you points across the board, so that's really nice. I miss having dual audio on Samsung phones. You can hook up your phone to two speakers at once and play music, so you can have a stereo sound. I miss having a headphone jack. Some phones still have that. There's just a lot of things with Android phones that you can pick and choose. If you want a phone with a stylus, you can get the Note. You want a phone with an amazing bezel screen, you get the OnePlus 7 Pro. That's just so much versatility in the Android world that you necessarily can't get with iOS and iPhones. You're stuck to what Apple released that year, and that's just pretty much it. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about switching between Android and iOS. There are limitations, but I don't think that people that are on Android right now I don't think that you will be, you will miss a lot of things if you switch over to iOS because iOS has become so much better over the years, and I think any Android user looking to switch, they'll be able to they'll be able to do it. You won't you won't regret it. All right. So those are my thoughts and impressions. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I have a lot of new ideas coming up. We have a lot of things going on that we're going to get to for the holidays. So it's going to be a fun time. Stick with me. Subscribe, like, share, all those fun things. All right. This has been Corey from King Tech. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.